Hi, I'm Allison. One of the big questions for scientists today is how can humans make use of biomass energy from plants for food and fuel? Plant matter is all around us, in trees, grass, and crops that grow in our fields. It's a huge potential source of energy, but it has to be converted into a usable form. Dr. Bruce Dale of Michigan State University tells us more. So when I was being trained as an engineer, taking my science and math classes way back a long time ago in the late 60s and early 70s, about all we thought about was non-renewable resources, things like coal and oil and natural gas. But this younger generation is going to have to make the transition to more sustainable energy systems. It'll still require a lot of science and a lot of math, and I think in this case a lot more life sciences, a lot more uh, other kinds of sciences, social sciences, so that engineers and scientists of the future can be effective across a very wide spectrum of, uh, of disciplines and be able to interact and, and think about how our society is going to evolve and, evolve and, and develop in the long term. I've been working on biomass energy research since about 1976. It turns out that unless we have lots of energy, our society gets poorer, not very healthy, and not very well educated. We have a lot of renewable sources of electricity, but in terms of renewable uh, liquid fuel, something to put in our gas tank, the only game in town really f uh, for us is plant material, uh, plant stuff, or what we call biomass. Uh, thus far, corn is about the only source of liquid fuels that we've used in the United States. Corn has a lot of benefits as a source of, of, uh, of liquid fuels. Uh, a number of years ago, I invented a process that we call ammonia fiber expansion, or AFEX. And what the AFEX process allows us to do is to take the sugars that are in all plant material, the sugars called cellulose and hemicellulose, and uh, uh, increase the yield of those, convert those uh, uh, two sugars much more easily. Uh, we can get those same sugars uh, converted to ethanol in, in other plant material, things like straw or grasses or wood chips and so forth, but you have to play some tricks. You have to break up the plant material. And we use a process, again, as I said, called AFEX, or ammonia fiber expansion. We use hot concentrated ammonia, we add it to the plant material, basically cook the plant material, corn stover or wheat straw or grasses like switchgrass, for about 30 minutes under pressure, and then we release the pressure, recover the ammonia, and reuse it. There are other ways of breaking open uh, plant cell walls, uh, but in general they involve acids, other toxic materials, and uh, they're quite expensive, and they create waste streams. We don't create waste streams with the AFEX process. Another very important advantage of AFEX, and it's why uh, we're making the next step up in commercialization, is that once you've treated this plant material, you then uh, have, can convert that plant material, that same AFEX treated biomass, uh, can be fed to ruminant animals, beef and dairy animals, and uh, it's a lot more digestible by them. So the AFEX process increases the yield of sugars from plant material by about four times, four or five times, depending on the material that you're using. Uh, well, that same, that same uh, limitations that keeps us from converting the sugars to fuel also reduce the conversion of those sugars to animal feed. And so we've actually solved two problems with one, with one approach. And so this is the basis on which we're uh, suggesting that the way to scale up and get very large uh, uh, production of ethanol and other liquid fuels from non-food plant material, that is not corn, but things like uh, crop residues like corn stover and wheat straw and, and grasses and so forth, uh, is to process these materials uh, using the AFEX process in what we call depots. These are relatively small-scale processing plants. So local communities, so groups of farmers and farm co-ops can own the depot and process the material, convert it to an animal feed, and then as the biofuel industry grows, then the cellulosic biofuel industry, then they can start providing a portion of that material to be converted to biofuel, so to solve the so-called chicken and the egg problem there. Uh, these depots process maybe 100 to 200 tons per day of material and uh, would be out in rural communities so that local employment opportunities would improve and you'd uh, provide a less expensive, highly digestible animal feed to reduce the food versus fuel concerns, improve the environmental characteristics of the process. So that's what's going on. Uh, this lab uh, that's uh, around me here is where we invented and are, have worked on the first scale of the process. We're all, it's also being scaled up today in a one ton per day pilot plant. We're trying to produce enough material, we are producing material, to, to feed the first uh, set of animals that, that, uh, on, on this treated material. So it's a very exciting time for us. And uh, again, we hope that we'll, we intend that it will lay the basis for a very large scale 
a liquid fuel system based on renewable plant material. Again, our society depends an awful lot on uh, liquid fuels being able to transport itself around. But right now we're dependent almost completely on oil for that and we all know that uh, oil is not going to last us forever. So it's important in the next few decades to lay the foundations of very large scale, sustainable, renewable uh, energy and liquid fuel systems uh, from, in this case, from plant material and from other renewables. With technology like this, Professor Dale and other scientists believe biomass can play a key role in more efficient use of land resources and crop residues. They also believe the world will be capable of meeting its needs for food and fuel, even as our population continues to grow. That's a win-win situation for all of us.